Hello students, it's Mrs. Whitman back with week three of the distance learning packet. Today I'm working on day 11 math task. Millie bought four bags of apples at the grocery store. Each bag contains six apples. How many apples does Millie have in all? Okay, this sounds like a classic multiplication problem because I have um, it says four bags of apples and each bag contains the same number of apples, six apples. So that clues me into multiplication. Um, now I need to find the total amount of apples. So I can use any multiplication strategy that makes sense to me. In this particular instance, I think I'm going to do equal groups because bags remind me of groups. So... Let's see, I'm gonna make my pen a little bit thicker here. Okay, I'm gonna make four bags. One, two, three, four, okay? And um, inside each bag or group, I'm going to put my quote unquote apples. So I'm gonna be counting, it says um, six apples in each bag. So I like to do tally marks because they're easy to see visually how many tally marks I've put in each group. So here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. 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 Okay, so now I can easily use the tally marks to count how many apples I have all together. I can count six plus six plus six plus six if I want, or I can do my fives first. That's the beauty of using tally marks. So I see five, 10, 15, 20, and then one, two, three, four. Therefore, six times four equals 24, okay? Now, let's say that you're not a big fan of the equal group strategy. Maybe you don't like strategies that involved drawing things so much. Maybe you're a number line kind of person. If that's your if that's your jam, that's totally fine. That's another great way to solve multiplication problems. If you want to, you can do a strategy like this called the open number line. With the open number line, you start at zero. And then in this case, we're going to be making either jumps of four or jumps of six. I think I'm gonna be make, I'm gonna do jumps of four six times just because it's a little bit easier for me to add, add up four in my head. So I'm gonna show you what I mean. Um, so if I make a jump of four here, that's plus four, right? So plus four, then I land on floor, okay? And then if I make another jump, of plus four, I land on eight, okay? And I'm gonna keep going until I have jumped six times because there's six apples in each bag, okay? So that's one, two, three jumps. Another jump, I land on 16, that's my fourth jump. The fifth jump, I land on 20. And on the sixth jump, I land on 24. I always like to go back and just count and make sure that I definitely jumped the right amount of times. I see one, two, three, four, five, six jumps. Therefore, once again, I have proven that six times four equals 24. Okay, two different ways to approach the same problem. Both are great strategies to use. I'm gonna do a little bit of the day 11 math page um, that talks about decomposing. In my previous day's videos, I've used decomposing quite a bit. We've talked about that strategy on a lot of the other videos. So if you wanna learn more about decomposing, um, I suggest that you go back and take a look at some of my other videos um, in the previous weeks. Now, in this page, or on this page, they get a little bit more into how the decomposing strategy is actually, it goes by another name, and that is the distributive property, okay? As you get older and go further into math, you're not really gonna see 
this strategy called decomposing. You're just going to see it, uh, or it's going to be known as the distributive property. Now, the key thing to remember here is um, that it allows you to decompose one factor. That's the most important thing when it comes to decomposing, okay? Um, generally, my advice to my students is you want to break apart the factor that is bigger in, when you're multiplying. So I'm going to do number, um, I'll do number four for you. And I'm going to take a look at both factors, eight times nine, nine is the bigger factor. I always advise my students to break apart the bigger one. It doesn't matter how you break it apart. You just have to think of two numbers that add up to nine. Okay. So for me, I think I'm going to do, and I'm going to, I'm going to be trying to write it the same way they write it up here in this format. Okay. So for nine, Let's do 4 plus 5, okay? So I'm going to write it again the way they did in the example. 8 times 9 equals, okay, the 8 is staying the same. We're not going to change that. 8 times, now here's where my 4 comes in. I write the 4 because that's what I'm, uh, one of the numbers I'm using to break apart the 9, okay? And then I'm going to add that to, again, the 8's not changing, so we keep that the same and then times five. That's where my other number comes in, okay? All right, so now if I know um, eight times four, I can do this really easily. Eight times four is 32, and then eight times five I know is 40, so now I add them together, and you can rewrite it vertically if that helps you to add them, so you don't have to think, oh, I have to do this in my head. Two in the ones place, three plus four is seven, so my final answer is 72, okay? So again, break apart the larger factor. It doesn't matter what two numbers that you choose to uh, break, it, break it apart. You just have to make sure it adds up to, um, in our case, this time it was nine. I could have chosen six and three. I could have chosen two and seven. Um, as long as it adds up to that number, you're fine. Okay, that's it for day 11. I will see you back with day 12 shortly.